interested in a job. I'm just looking for the right person to do the wrong thing. Hello everyone. One of Elrond's high priests, John Travolta, commanded me to give advice on the various weapon and suit modifications that are available in Odyssey. So we're going to have a look at all the weapon and suit mods and discuss what's good and what's not. We will have a look at my current builds and discuss what I would change if I could. And in the description I'm going to give links to previous videos where I utilise many of the various modifications so you can see what they're like in practice. We will start by looking at the modifications on my Maverick suit. Now the most important modification by far is the extra backpack capacity because this doubles your carrying capacity and massively increases your looting efficiency which makes it a lot quicker to unlock everything else. Reduced tool battery consumption is also very good. It halves the energy dissipated whenever you use a tool such as the energy link gun. This is quite important early on when you don't have a silenced weapon. It's not too useful once you've got a silenced weapon because if you don't have a silenced weapon you're probably going to be using the energy link tool a lot. It's also useful if you're going to be messing around and power down settlements a lot so that you can get through doors. Improved jump assist lets the boost take you higher and it regenerates faster. It's quite useful for getting away from things and jumping over buildings. It's not essential, but it makes the game a lot more fun, I think. Improved battery capacity increases your battery capacity by 50%, which is particularly useful for the Maverick suit if you're going to be messing around having to overload doors and whatnot. We'll now take a look at one of my Dominator suits. Now, the extra ammo capacity mod is really only useful, I find, if you're using the rocket launcher because it doesn't carry that much ammo and the extra 50% makes a difference. For most of the other guns, they have quite a good ammo capacity already, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the damage resistance mod just increases your various uh, damage resistances. I can't really say that it makes that big a difference but it might keep you alive sometimes. The faster shield regen increases the rate at which your shield regenerates, which is quite important because as long as your shields are up, it will prevent a potential killing blow. I do have improved battery capacity on this as well because in combat zones, it can be a pain always having to go and recharge so that you don't suffocate and so that you can get your shields back up. Now we'll have a look at my other Dominator suit. Now increased sprint duration, that basically increases uh, your sprint time by 50%. I think it's a very good uh, modification. Combat movement speed, on the other hand, is awful. All it does is increase your movement speed slightly while you're aiming down the sights, making it fairly worthless. Now, the Enhanced Tracking mod does a few things. So, it increases the range at which people will pop up in your radar when you're looking in their direction, and they will pop up faster. It also helps for you to see the clearance level and name of of people you're looking at because you can see that from a further distance away and it will pop up faster. I wouldn't say it's a hugely useful modification. I think night vision would be better at locating where individuals are, but it's not terrible. It's It's not as good as I thought it would be. I thought it would maybe be very useful for, you know, combat situations because you'd be able to identify people running at you faster. 
though I don't think it helps that much. As I said, I think Night Vision would do a better job at that. The added melee damage modification increases melee damage by 150%, but it's not particularly useful unless you're wanting to lay a beat down into some scientist who doesn't believe in the word of Elrond. The quieter footsteps modification helps a lot. It reduces the audible range of your footsteps by 50%. So regardless of which way you're moving, regardless of whether you're running, walking, crouch walking, you can get a lot closer to people without them reacting, which makes a huge difference if you're trying to do things covertly. It would make the game a lot easier if you have this mod, basically. So it's a... It's a good one, right? It's a good one. The night vision modification covers everything in a green overlay, just as ship night vision does. It can be toggled on and off. And it does drain suit power, so if your suit runs out of power, you can't use it anymore. It is very good in the dark, obviously. In fact, night vision in this game is a lot better than night vision in the real world. It doesn't really cause any issues if you have it on in a bright area. It just doesn't really function. So it's a, ve it's a very good mod, this one, if you're going to be in the dark, which is quite a lot of the time. The only suit modification I haven't mentioned so far is the increased O2 reserves which massively increases your emergency air supply, but that only matters if your suit runs out of power. So it could be useful for the Artemis suit if you like to go quite far out. I would mention though, however, that when your suit runs out of power, you might take damage if the planet is hot. So that could potentially kill you before your O2 reserves run out anyway. But I think the planet would have to be really, really hot for that to matter. Now, just to have a bit of a review of my suit builds. So this again is my Maverick suit. Now, this Maverick suit is kind of configured to be a working man's suit, right? So it's got extra backpack capacity to carry stuff. It's got reduced tool battery consumption and improved battery capacity. So that means I can, you know, use all the tools and hang around somewhere for quite a while without having to get more power. So it's kind of a, a convenient suit. Uh, and the improved jump assist, well, just, just makes the game a bit more fun. It doesn't make too big a difference. If I wanted to make my life easier, I would have taken out improved jump assist and replaced it with the quieter footsteps because quieter footsteps does make missions a lot easier. This is uh, my first Dominator suit. So it's kind of made to hang around a specific area for a while without having to go get more ammo or power cells. So it's kind of like a, a hold position suit. This is my other Dominator suit. So I was kind of hoping this would be kind of like a good attacking suit. Increased sprint speed is very useful. Again, combat movement speed is worthless. Don't bother with it. Enhanced tracking I thought would be good, but it's not really that useful. And faster shield regen is okay. I really would like to replace combat movement speed with something that isn't worthless. Potentially uh, the increased damage resistance. And I would have liked to have replaced the enhanced tracking with night vision. This is my Artemis suit. Now, to be honest, I'm not really much of an explorer, but for this suit, I would say improved battery capacity is essential. I'd also recommend extra backpack capacity because then you can carry more stuff before you have to go back to your ship. Night vision, it helps dealing in places in perpetual darkness because it is a lot better than using your torch. And improved jump assist, well, you know, it helps you get around a lot easier and it can help you get around a lot faster as well if you do things right. Let's look at the weapon modifications now. 
We'll start with improved hip fire accuracy, which slightly decreases bullet dispersion while firing from the hip. Uh, this mod doesn't make a big difference and I don't think it's very useful in most cases because it's always best to be aiming down the sights because that massively increases accuracy and de decreases dispersion for every gun. There are some guns where it's not a complete waste of time, like it's okay with the shotgun. It's not too bad with the plasma pistol, but other than that, it's not a very good mod because it's very important to be aiming down the sights. Now, headshot damage, which is quite a good one, increases the headshot modifier of a given gun by 50%. And remember that uh, laser weapons, plasma weapons and kinetic weapons all have different headshot modifiers. So it's best used with the kinetic weapons, I would say. And it's not very good with the Tormentor and the Sniper Rifle because their headshots kill everything in one shot anyway. So having an extra headshot modifier doesn't help. Uh, there is a chance the Enforcers could potentially survive a headshot from the Manticore Tormentor, but I haven't confirmed that yet. I think there may be a, a glitch involved with their hitboxes. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on. The Stowed Reloading mod is a favourite of mine, as you'll see. So how it works is you holster your weapon and it reloads itself. And it will fully reload itself regardless of whether the clip is completely empty or if it's just missing one bullet. It technically takes three seconds, I believe. However, if you include the time to holster the weapon and then whip it out again, the process takes a bit over five seconds, I think. This is a very good modification for keeping up the pressure. So it works well if you've got multiple weapons which have st stored reloading so that you can fire one, empty the clip, then holster it, then whip out the next gun, empty the clip, and then by that time your first weapon has reloaded. So it's a, a very good modification. Now, everyone should have at least one fully silenced gun. My one is the Manticore Tormentor here, which is the plasma pistol. So there are two different mods involved with silencing a weapon. The first one is the noise suppressor, which suppresses sound in pressurized environments. That's buildings that have their you know environmental controls working. The other one is audio masking, which acts as a silencer outside in unpressurized environments. So if you have both of these in one gun, it will act as a silencer in all situations. And silencers make the game a lot easier because you can kill people silently very, very quickly. In fact, in some cases, you can just run through a map, killing everyone silently and no one's the wiser. So silence mods make the game a lot easier. Otherwise, the only way of killing people silently is with the energy link tool, which can be a bit of a pain because it drains a lot of power, which is actually why my Maverick suit has the increased battery capacity and the reduced tool consumption. The stability mod is another great modification. So it massively reduces a weapon's recoil and this makes a big difference for a lot of weapons, particularly the kinetic weapons such as the Karma AR-50. It also helps a lot with the Manticore Tormentor, which I didn't think it would. So because it just reduces a weapon's recoil, it doesn't have much of an impact with the sniper rifle because it takes so long between shots, the recoil will have dissipated by the time you take the next shot anyway. 
but as long as the gun is fairly fast firing, such as the Tormentor, then the stability will help a lot. So it's basically good as long as um, the time between shots firing isn't too long, right? So basically it's good for every gun other than the sniper rifle. Now, another great modification is magazine size. So it increases your clip size by 50%. That's simple, everybody wants that. The reload speed modification increases the reload speed by about 25 to 30%. I think it might depend on the type of gun. I need to point out that the reload speed modification does not stack with the stowed reloading modification in any way, right? So the reload speed modification doesn't increase the rate of the stowed reloading. The faster handling modification increases the rate at which you can put the weapon away, pull it out again and aim down the sights. It's not a massive improvement. It's not a great mod, but it does stack in a way because if you've got two weapons which have faster handling, then you can essentially put the first weapon away faster and then whip the second weapon out faster. So it does stack in a way. Now I'm going to go through each of my weapons and discuss what I would change about them if I could because we can't swap out weapon mods at the moment. But I should probably mention something about scopes. Now with each weapon you can put a scope on it and for some of them the improved scope isn't very good, to be honest. In some cases, I feel that the the non-modified scope is actually better. But anyway, let's think about the shotgun. Now, with the shotgun, if you aim down the sights, regardless of whether you put an improved scope on it or not, it massively reduces the spread of the shot, right? Now, if you put an improved scope on it, it is meant to further reduce the spread of the pellets, but I think they might have changed something with that recently, or at least made it less extreme. Anyway, I haven't really done much experiments with the improved scope because I've been fairly certain they would nerf it if they haven't already. I think they did make some changes to aiming down the sights with the shotgun, because I have found it a bit harder to snipe people with it by aiming down the sights. But anyway, I'm assuming that the whole scope bullet spread thing is going to change if it hasn't changed already, so I'm not really going to speak about it anymore. So this is my Kinetic SMG. I have it quite well configured, so it's got greater range because SMGs have got quite a puny range. I've got stability on it, which massively reduces the recoil. I've got improved magazine size, which increases the clip up to 90 bullets, which is insane. And I put stored reloading on it. Now, because it's already got quite a big clip size, I probably should have replaced stored reloading with headshot damage. But I think the gun's fairly fine as it is. I could potentially put a silencer on it to make it good for rapidly murdering people down before they can get their shields up. But again, it's quite a well-configured SMG. This is my uh, plasma sniper. Now, you'll immediately see that I've got the headshot damage mod on it, which is completely pointless for this gun because a headshot will kill anyone anyway. I put stored reloading on it. I mean, it's fairly okay for this. Magazine size, I think that's a very good modification for this because it increases the clip size from, from 3 up to 5. And I put audio masking on it because that silences outdoor shots and you're not really going to be using this indoors anyway. Although, to be fair, it does function as a shotgun fairly well, I've found. 
This is my laser pistol. So it's fairly well configured. The headshot damage modifier just increases the damage from headshots by 50%. So laser weapons uh, just have a headshot modifier of 1, so they don't do any extra damage for headshots by default, I think. And the magazine size, that's always a good add-on to any gun. Now, this is the kinetic pistol, which is the deadliest pistol in the game. And the way I've got it configured, I would say it's better than the, at killing people than the SMG and the kinetic rifle, just because of how ridiculously accurate it is. And one headshot will almost kill an elite anyway, assuming their shields are down and a body shot will finish them off. So I've got the stability mod on it, which basically makes it perfectly accurate while rapid firing it. It's got greater range because that helps a lot since its range is quite puny. Headshot damage, so it's got a three times headshot modifier, right? So it's very deadly. And magazine size, so it's got quite a big clip as well, 36 bullets. So this... I originally configured this to potentially kill other commanders, but it's just too overpowered. You could put a silencer on it and it would be very good at clearing out bases because you would reliably kill people before they got their shields up anyway. This, this is my rocket launcher. Now you'll note that I've got magazine size on it. That's essential because it increases the number of rockets you can carry from two to three. Uh, stored reloading, that's another essential one because you're just want, gonna want to be uh, offloading your rockets onto heretics and then swapping gun. The other modifications, uh, they're okay. To be honest, there's not very many good modifications for the rocket launcher. So I think I modified it about as well as I can. Uh, this is the Athlon, or however you say it. Uh, this is probably one of the best weapons in the game. I do have faster handling on it, which isn't great. Magazine size is good, but to be honest, this gun knocks out people's shields really quickly, so you don't really need the increased magazine size, particularly if you've got stowed reloading. And I put greater range on it, which... Uh, isn't bad so for this gun I wouldn't recommend putting both the magazine size and stowed reloading on it and faster handling isn't great either that actually came with the gun now let's move on to the Karma AR-50 now I have improved hip fire accuracy on this which came from the gun that's fairly worthless because you're going to want to be aiming down the sights with it anyway. I would have liked to have improved it with uh, stability. So if I could have swapped out stability for improved hip fire accuracy, I mean, improved hip fire accuracy for stability, that would have made it a lot better. Also, I could have replaced the hip fire accuracy with improved clip size. That also would have helped a lot. So. This is my Manticore Tormentor, which is made as a silenced weapon. So I've got both the silencers on it, the greater range and stability. I would have liked to have put the increased magazine size on it, so I probably should have replaced greater range for the magazine size mod. Uh, this is my shotgun, which is the first gun I engineered, so it's not really optimal. So magazine size, yep, that's absolutely essential. The improved hip fire accuracy, yeah, it's okay, but you're going to want to be aiming down the sights anyway, because that massively reduces the dispersion. So I would have liked to have replaced the hip fire accuracy with the greater range mod. Stored reloading. It's okay, but to be honest, I don't think it works too well with the shotgun because the reload speed is very quick anyway, but it's not bad. 
Headshot damage, yeah, it helps a bit. It makes it a lot easier to one-shot people, so that's not bad. Now the Manticore Oppressor. Um, it's a bit of a joke gun because it's so awful. But I've configured it about as well as I can, I think. I mean, it does have a, a big clip size. It's good if people stand still, but other than that, it's pretty useless. Ah, the Eclipse. So the Laser SMG. I've got it configured fairly well because it was one of the last guns I upgraded. So I'm not really sure what I would change about it. I think I've gone through everything now. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll probably get around to them quite quickly. If I've said anything that's incorrect, let me know and I'll put a correction in the video description. I'll also put a bunch of links to various videos from my past in which I use various, you know, weapons and modifications so you can have a look at them. Other than that, good day everyone.